our copywriting masterclass is coming down in 36 hours. Um, so that's a uh, scarcity-based uh, email subject line where they know they've only got uh, three days before the copywriting masterclass actually uh, um, is made unavailable. So they know they have to uh, open that one and click through if they want to watch the replay. That's how that one works. So it's a scarcity element. The next trick that you can do is, uh, at the start here, it's got, the, it's got name and in the brackets there. Um, uh, you can uh, insert, one of the tricks that I'm gonna show you in a minute is how to actually insert their name into a subject line to make it really personal. Um, it says name, so if I signed up to this uh, list with the name Brian, it would, go, it would say, Brian, we'll see you at 9 p.m. Singapore time on Wednesday. So just by using uh, the name in the, uh, in the very first word of that subject line, um, I've got a really high open rate on that email. Uh, one that didn't work so good for me, I always like to show this one. Uh, this one's up the top there, should be a bit easier to see. And it's just the word, hey. So once you start to get on the email lists of a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, marketers and copywriters, you'll, you'll find that some, some of them are using a subject line which is just, hey. And that, that's, that, that, might, work, that might work for you. Um, it's re a really personal thing, so it just looks like you're, uh, an email from a friend. Um, it didn't work so well for me in this time, but I see a lot of good marketers using this one. Um, uh, it's still got a reasonable open rate, but I've experienced a lot higher open rates than that, so it didn't really work for me, but uh, in that personal one-on-one -on -one interaction that, that I think that, that, that a lot of us will use with our clients and the prospects, uh, that could work really well. It's just an idea to test. Uh, I, I go by three principles of subject lines. Uh, personalization, that, that's the one I was just talking about. So if you have an email software and you have automated sequences, for example, you can automatically insert it. Or you, if you're just a one-on-one -on -one interaction like many of us use, you, know, um, you just use their name in the subject line. Using their, their name, especially when they know it's a personal email from you, um, that's really powerful. It really gets their attention in their inbox. And you can see how high the open rates were before. Um, don't beat around the bush. Tell them straight up why, what's inside and why they should open it now. Um, <clears throat> uh, so you could basically say, here's uh, uh, you know, name, or Brian, here's the PDF that, that, uh, that you asked for, or um, details inside of the event coming up. Um, don't be afraid to just tell them straight out what it is. Um, don't, don't worry too much about uh, any, any weird tricks or things you might have learned. Just tell them what it is and why they should open it now. Again, 30 to 50 characters is, is uh, um, probably the, the absolute most that you want to limit these subject lines uh, to. So um, if you stay below that limit, you know, you're gonna get a, a good, good read on a mobile device. Because we often write these things on our computer, we've got a huge screen and, and every, everything looks brilliant, but uh, uh, then they open it up on their phone and they can only see the, the first few words of the subject line. Uh, so you've gotta think about it from their point of view. Images are something that uh, is very underused. And when you guys start, uh, start using images in your emails, uh, when you do them the right way, um, you'll be surprised at the transformation. I'll show you how that works. Uh, most emails are just text only, ugly, boring. Um, but human nature is that we're actually drawn to something beauty. We're actually drawn, most of us are visual creatures. Uh, we're, we're much more drawn to a good image than we are to reading a copy, especially if there's a lot of it. Good images can even count, encounter counter, sorry, average copies. So if, you're, if you haven't studied copywriting for years, uh, that, that's no problem. If you choose a good image, then that will get a lot of interest from the people writing your emails. Images always get more clicks than text. So, um, let me show you that. This is an actual email from, uh, from Mindvalley that, that I wrote uh, probably beginning of 2016. And in 2016, this, uh, this product sold about $1.2 million. Um, so this is email number one of the sequence that goes out. Um, and you can see the uh, percentages uh, on, this, on this slide. 
Um, if it's a bit hard to read, remember to ask me uh, for the slides later on. But when you see that, the, most of them are quite small. But this image here, and the link immediately above it, so that image area here, that's, um, that's more, uh, per, a higher percentage of clicks than everything else in the email combined. So the eye is naturally drawn to this part, um, and uh, people naturally click there. And this is tested over hundreds of thousands of emails sent. Um, that's where these statistics come from. So uh, we know that they hold true uh, over, over, over a long period of time. Uh, the thing about the image, if you go back to here, it must be related to the destination. Like um, this image here in particular is the uh, cover art for that free course that we were giving away. So the trick is um, they see the image in the email. When they click through, they must know that they're in the right place. So you can't just have, have a, a, a clever or a pretty picture in here. Uh, it's got to be related to uh, the destination or, or like look exactly like it so they know that they're in the right place when they arrive uh, at your page. Uh, if it's a video, screenshot the video. It can be as simple as that. Um, I do that a lot. You know, if, it, if it's a YouTube video, for example, um, I just uh, um, uh, do a screen capture of that YouTube video. So when they, when they, when they land on that page, they know they're in the right place. Or you can just add a play button with, with some software. Um, uh, my secret weapon for um, email marketing images is a site called canva.com. And uh, um, even with a, with a free account there, you, you, can do you can do tons of stuff there. You can add different graphics. Um, uh, many of you have probably uh, tried that site before. It's, it's, gra it's a great free resource for, for graphics too. Now, storytelling is really interesting. Um, many of you will be uh, natural storytellers and you uh, sta stand around in the club telling stories and you stand, uh, get at family gatherings telling stories. Uh, and uh, that's how humans you know, um, traditionally pass on uh, knowledge and information to one another. Um, so if you're a natural storyteller, then you have an advantage. Um, I'm not, I'm not that kind of uh, storyteller. I'm working on it so that, uh, um, you know, I can uh, um, uh, communicate better in person, in print, in emails, all that kind of stuff. But you don't have to be a natural storyteller. But stories do tell, sell, I'm sorry, it's benefits, features and benefits tell. Um, but stories are what sell. Um, and the, tri the trick is to link emails together with stories. So you start a story in one email and, uh, and end it in another, then, uh, uh, then people need to stick around for the next email. I'll show you that in a minute. This is a quick hack that I was talking about uh, to engineer that engagement without me having to be uh, um, a great or natural storyteller. Uh, the way that um, uh, storytelling works is if you uh, consider uh, the uh, red line at the bottom to be your average um, uh, open rates, uh, starting at 30% and then sinking way down the more emails you send. There's different emails along the bottom here. Um, the blue line is where you can expect uh, engagement. It, it, it's always going to sink from the first email, but it does stay higher when people are interested to read your emails more. In copywriting, we call them open loops. Uh, who has watched Breaking Bad, uh, Lost, all, the, all those, uh, those TV shows? Who has watched those shows where they have the cliffhanger at the end? So watching those kinds of shows uh, on TV is, is a great way to learn exactly how to do this. I take a lot of ins inspiration from the, uh, these shows. Uh, cliffhangers are a great way to actually uh, uh, get someone to, if they finish your reading your email, um, to get them looking forward with anticipation to getting the next email. Uh, they call them open loops in copywriting terminology. Um, and it's, it's very simple. In step one, uh, you open the loop, so you start the story off. Um, and uh, in, this is a really, really complicated uh, and complex uh, system, so please pay attention. Step two is close the loop in the next email. And closing the loop means that you uh, finish off the story in that second email and you, you give them the payoff uh, of, that they've waited uh, you know, sometimes days for. So if we look at this example, 
the top box is uh, one email, and uh, it, it says, uh, do you know the what number one reason why people struggle to meditate effectively? Uh, think about it today, and I'll give you the answer tomorrow. So that's email one. This email uh, two here is the, comes the second day, and it starts off, now I'm going to give you the answer to the question I asked yesterday um, about the re number one reason why people struggle to meditate. So that's a great way to um, get people looking forward to uh, the next email that you send, because if you send one email and you just finalize it all there and wrap it up in a neat little package, then there's no reason for people to anticipate the next email. That's why those TV shows uh, don't do that. Otherwise, uh, you would have that closure at the end of the, at one episode, and uh, you know, uh, then where's your motivation to uh, watch the next episode? I mean, uh, logically, we think that uh, you know I, I'm, I'm interested in watching the next episode anyway. But it's proven through uh, decades of, of what the TV sh stations have been doing, where um, they do the cliffhangers, so you need to um, you need to tune into the next show. So that's why it works. And you can do them over multiple emails as well. Um, so this will be easier to read if, when you download the slides. But this email one, two, three, um, spreading the story over three different emails. Um, <coughs> uh, and it basically says, tomorrow I'll reveal the answer. And then, uh, then, it, then it reveals the answer literally in the next email. Now, inboxing is really important too. So. Um, we talk about sending emails, and, uh, and whether you're sending out an automated sequence or whether you're uh, having a one-on-one -on -one interaction, we send an email, but that's no guarantee that it's actually, actually going to arrive in the person's inbox. You think about it, a Gmail has the promotions tab, it has the, uh, um, a, the spam folder, all that sort of stuff. And uh, um, I often write in my emails uh, the line, and you can use this, uh, a line that says, um, uh, uh, <clears throat> add me to your contacts because uh, even legitimate emails end up in the spam folder accidentally sometimes. And that's absolutely true um, because um, the uh, um, ISPs, uh, their, pro their attitude is probably not as harsh as this, but if you, if you can take on the attitude that, that uh, uh, the ISPs that think you're spamming, then uh, that will help you to write a good email um, that will get past their spam filters. Because it's true that even, even emails that people have asked for quite often actually end up in, in, uh, in, uh, in people's inboxes, in, in people's spam folders, I mean, so. Uh, so that happens all the time. Legal rules still apply, um, especially if you're um, communicating with people uh, uh, in the US or, or Western countries that have very strict spam laws. I mean, you have got to have things like, uh, I'm not an expert on on spam law, um, or any law, to be honest, but uh, you've got to have like, things like your um, business address, um, uh, contact details, and a way to unsubscribe. Um, it's still amazing that I actually see uh, people sending out um, commercial emails, and uh, they either have the option, like, um, you have to manually reply um, to, uh, to the email and, and tell them to unsubscribe, which is like, um, uh, something that people aren't going to bother to do, or they actually have no way of unsubs unsubscribing at all, which, which is actually illegal. So, um, I mean, the, the simplest way to do that, if you're just sending one-on-one -on -one emails, is just to have a little text at the bottom, and you can use this. It says, um, uh, if you no, want, no longer want to receive emails from us, just hit reply and tell, and tell us to unsubscribe. So that keeps you legal and within the law, and then, then no one can touch you. Not that that's legal advice or anything, but... <laughs> Uh, um, that's, that's basically what I do in that situation. Copywriting principles definitely apply. So this is what I was talking about earlier with, you know, um, uh, building the relationship with people. Um, copywriting isn't just about selling. It's about um, uh, building relationship and uh, building rapport with people. Um, uh, and the same principles that you use to build rapport and, and close the sale one-on-one uh, -on -one in person um, are the exact same principles that, that work uh, with the written word as well. Um, I mean, copywriting is simply salesmanship in print. So that, that's all it is. The exact same principles apply. Uh, list hygiene is important. 
because a healthy list is a profitable list. Um, it's amazing uh, uh, how smart these, these uh, uh, email, serv email services like Gmail and Hotmail are. Uh, if people aren't uh, opening your emails and if people aren't clicking on your links, uh, I'm not, I don't know how they know, but they know. So uh, if you can get people engaging with your emails, you're more likely to hit the, hit the, uh, the, hit the inbox. Uh, if people are ignoring your emails, then uh, Gmail and, and Yahoo and, and those guys know that. Uh, don't ask me how the technology works, but uh, they have um, these kind of data systems these days which, which you can't ignore. They know what's going on. It's the same as the way that uh, when you visit a website and you, then you go on Facebook, suddenly the ad is, ad is following you around. It's called retargeting. They have all complicated systems all around that. They can even listen on your phone call uh, and, and re do retargeting advertising that way. So it's amazing. They know what's going on when you're sending emails, whether you've got a list of a million or just uh, 10. Engagement's a tricky balancing act because you don't want to uh, um, try too hard. You don't want to send too many emails. Um, but you don't want to send too few emails as well. So if someone comes in, um, uh, let's say they, they, they uh, uh, send in an inquiry from a website uh, on a property, for example. Um, you might give them some preliminary in, in information. And let's say they don't, uh, so they, they don't uh, call back for a, uh, an inspection just yet. Um, you don't, want, you don't want to try too hard in that situation, send them too many emails and bombard them with information. Um, but you don't want to ignore them either. That's why it's, it's really difficult to, to actually do this right. Um, so just use the same principles that you would if you were talking one-on-one uh, -on -one to the people. Uh, basically, if they stop responding, um, that's, a, that's a reason to stop emailing them. Uh, I would suggest a, uh, a time period of three months. Some people like to leave it longer, but three months from when they last um, responded to you uh, to when you take them off your list. Um, you can do it as little, I think if one-on-one -on -one, uh, one -on -one interactions, you can probably do it in a month after they stop replying. Um, but like I was saying before, if people aren't interacting with, your, with the emails that you're sending out, um, that's not a break even, like no result. That's actually hurting your email deliverability. It's uh, hurting your reputation with, with Gmail and, uh, and Hotmail and, and the other providers. Um, so if you've got, if you've got uh, 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 dead email addresses that the people aren't opening or clicking or anything, that actually hurts uh, your marketing campaigns. Um, again, tell them how to unsubscribe because um, Again, this, is, this comes back to the copyright, the, the actual spam laws. Uh, uh, don't hide the fact that, 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 they, that they can unsubscribe. Don't, don't, don't try and shy away from these things. Uh, be honest and tell them and, and, and honor that when they do unsubscribe. Um, that's, that's how you build the relationship with the ones who do stick around. Uh, email content. This is, this is some uh, simple tricks that, that you can use and you can apply to any emails that you write um, that really help you to improve the results uh, of your campaigns. You can use them on, on your subject lines. Uh, you can use them in the body of the emails. Um, spam filters uh, like to catch emails with, with the words free or buy in them. Uh, they like to catch really short emails. If you check your spam folder, you'll see a lot of emails with just, like, just a link in there or, really, um, or a really short email. Um, so uh, avoid that. What else? Email, um, uh, email providers don't, don't like emails written in poor English. Um, so make sure that, that uh, um, uh, your writing is up to standard. I know you guys are all, all professionals, so you probably uh, got this sorted. But if you look, go and look in your spam folder, you look at some of these uh, emails from, from uh, supposedly from, from Russian girls or um, Nigerian princes. Um, we've all seen those, and uh, the English is invariably quite bad. So it's amazing how complicated their software is that they can actually pick up that sort of thing. All caps is shouting. I think you guys probably probably aware of this, so um, I sometimes use it in, in one word, 
and one word only if you really want to highlight it. Because you don't want to put too much formatting in your email and make it look messy. You use it in one word, but to, um, a sentence like that, that's shouting to someone. Uh, the, the email providers also um, know that when there's uh, too many images in your email. So I, I talked about images, and they're really powerful for getting a lot of clicks. But just keep it to one image. Um, uh, different images can be confusing. Uh, they're also interpreted as spam by, by uh, ISPs, so um, they can uh, land your email in the spam box uh, just because you've got a bunch of different I images in there. Same goes with links. I mean, if you're doing a one-on-one -on -one, uh, interaction email like, like many of us would, I mean, you probably just need like one link. One, li one uh, text link and the image um, a link because that's the other thing that I've actually forgot to mention uh, when we covered images. Um, uh, if you've ever gotten an email with an image in it and you click on the image and then it just opens up the, that image uh, in your browser, it's like a, a preview of that image. Um, but when you remember that uh, images get so, ma so much more clicks than, than text links, uh, remember you, that you can make the image a clickable link as well. And that, that's how you get that's how you get a lot of click-throughs to whatever um, page or resource that you're sending them. But if you have too many, I see, I've seen marketers use a lot of text links uh, throughout the body of their email, different places all over the place, and it just ends up looking messy, and it also increases the chance of that email provider actually flagging that as spam as well. Um, one of the golden rules of copywriting that I use is just to write as casually as you can. You know, um, write, uh, write as if we're, we're, just talk, like we're just talking here today. You know, um, as you can probably tell, it's not, not a, uh, uh, a, a, an over-rehearsed, polished presentation. I'm just talking to you guys and showing, showing you uh, um, a few tricks and examples. So um, don't try to uh, be too professional. I mean, we're all professionals here, but, um, but you can be, you know, Overly, uh, overly corporate-y and, uh, and boring uh, in, in, uh, in the emails that you write. Um, uh, so you can uh, uh, use words that are, that are too big, um, you know, and just, just plain boring text. Just write literally as, as we're talking today, you know, as, as you talk to um, your colleagues in, in the hallway outside. Um, that's exactly how you, how you need to write your emails, just as you're talking to one-on-one -on -one to a person. Um, a few pro tips to really take this to the next level. Use copy to stay in the inbox. This is what I was talking about before. Um, when I say use copy, it doesn't mean, uh, it doesn't mean use magical words to, to close a sale. It's all about building that relationship. I've mentioned it several times for a reason, because this is probably one of the most important, uh, you know, um, uh, this is one of the most critical uh, parts of, of any copywriting. Any copy that you write needs to, um, to build that relationship with the person uh, who's, who's reading the email on the other end. So write like you talk, like I was saying before. Um, check how it looks on mobile. So it's not just the subject line that you want to check on your phone. Uh, send yourself an email and, and take a look how it looks on mobile. Because um, on, on mobile, if you put too much text above your image, it can force the image down really quickly, and on a smaller screen, you know, it, it, uh, it can hide the image altogether. And people do scroll sometimes, but uh, um, uh, really, you don't want them to, to scroll at all to be able to see your image. Track your open rates and clicks. So if you're using automated software to, to send out emails, um, they'll have tracking function uh, inbuilt. If we're doing like one-on-one, -on -one, uh, uh, emails to, to a single prospect, then, uh, um, then uh, there, there, are, um, there are plugins uh, for browsers that, that can do that. Um, uh, I, ca I can tell you some, some of the plugins uh, that I use for um, checking when people open your email. There's one, there's one for Gmail. Um, so I can, uh, I can tell you about that after. But the most important part is always keep, keep learning about writing your copy. Um, so, you know, um, that's the period, that's the um, most important part of all this. 
Uh, and the next step is that I want you to keep up with your copywriting studies. Um, this is how you improve your results, because uh, I've shared with you everything that, um, that uh, you know, I've, uh, uh, I've, uh, I've been able to in this relatively short time period, but um, uh, I'm an eternal student. You know, I've been doing this for nearly 15 years, and I'm still buying copywriting courses. I'm still uh, um, studying with everyone that I can. I'm still reading everything that, that I can possibly find on on copywriting, I'm still learning myself. Uh, I do have a, a course, I also coach students on copywriting. We're doing something uh, special for this event because I was talking to the guys um, and they, they really negotiated hard because, uh, because uh, on a freelance basis, you know, I, I, w I focus mainly for Mind Valley, so I don't need like, to do other stuff outside of Mind Valley, I just do it because I want to. Um, but uh, they, they, really, uh, they really negotiated hard for this. Um, because it's not fair to give you this information but, uh, but not have any next steps to be able to carry on with it. So I decided to put, put on a workshop. Um, and uh, I've, th this way I get to personally uh, help you guys one-on-one -on -one, uh, to write better. Um, so next month we're, we're going to do this. Um, we'll cover email copywriting in depth. So I've covered the basics here today, and uh, um, that's going to help you. Um, if you go back to that and you download the slides later, that will really help you improve your results. But if you want to take it to the next level, um, uh, I've ordered something just for you guys, just for IQI people. Um, uh, what, is it, what are we going to do? It's just a fraction of the, of the normal cost for this workshop. Um, the guys really um, negotiated hard because uh, the video copywriting course that I have is US 495. And uh, I, I charge and get up to $1,000 a month to, to coach students on a freelance basis. And these are, these are current situations. Um, many of them go on to make big money. Uh, for you, it's a, it's a, it's a all-day workshop, and it's only 200 um, for IQI members. So, um, 200 I'm, ringgit yeah. for IQI members. Uh, thanks, thanks to the guys for uh, twisting my arm to make this happen. Um, <laughs> what you want to do now is make sure you're free on August 16th, it goes from 2 to 6 p.m. Um, go and see Hebe at the back now to register for that before the event fills up. I'm not sure about the actual size of the room that we'll be in. Um, so make sure you get in before it uh, fills up. I'll send our, everyone uh, uh, an email with all the details on the, on the actual curriculum later on, but uh, that's the, I think that's, that's a Wednesday that uh, is the 16th. Um, from 2 to 6. Um, Hall of Champions, uh, get there about 1.30, um, we'll, we'll catch up before we go in the room, uh, start from 2 o'clock and we'll start on time, uh, so no, no late comes, get there about 1.30. But the most important thing is to use your email copywriting skills to land more clients and more sales. So um, the workshop is the next level, but even if you just use what's on the slides, that's okay as well. Um, but what I, what I really want is for everyone to actually uh, take their copywriting to the next level. So, um, yeah, thanks for listening to me today. I think we're just about out of time, aren't we? So go and register with Hebe up the back now if you want to uh, come a, uh, to a, uh, a, a personal workshop with me. Uh, and uh, that's it. Thank you, Brian. Let's give a big round of applause to Brian.